Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to navigate through Utopia and uh, a basic understanding of the game. Uh, before I go any further, one of the things you should uh, um, check out is the forms, the rules, the guide up here. Uh, let me zoom in on that just to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, these three things up here are going to be lifesavers for you, especially if you're a new player, and uh, you might learn some new things if you're an experienced player. Um, one of the main reasons why I'm telling you about this is because there are strategies involved in this game, and though I can sit here and make videos about these strategies, uh, I could be here forever because realistically there are hundreds of different strategies out there. Um, not a single strategy is technically a wrong strategy. Uh, they, uh, you do want to try to stay to strategies that are specific towards your style of play, you know, attacker, mage, thief, whatever. But uh, there's technically no wrong strategy, but in order to be successful in the game, um, it is good to follow at least a proven strategy. And you'll find those in forums, and let's actually go to the forums real fast to see what they look like. And uh, you can find the news, talk, strategy, um, general talk, all kinds of things here. You can report any bugs, any suggestions, Q&A, all kinds of different things right here. Um, so this is a pretty useful tool. Same with the guide. You can open that up and you're going to see a lot about the game here. Uh, official guides, player written guides, videos, tips and tricks. Um, that is my video by the way so you can click on that and learn about Angel and Pimp which uh, are important tools. Um, I'm not going to go into details about those right now because I do have a separate video on that and it's a little bit more advanced however it is something you do want to check out if you're going to be serious about the game because these two tools right here are lifesavers. Anyway um, you can download those tools down here There's you Utopia Angel, there's Utopia Pimp. Uh, Pimp is a website, not an actual tool to download, just so you know. And uh, Angel doesn't take up much space, so you don't need to worry about that. But there are other ones besides Angel and Pimp you can check out. Uh, I use Angel and I use Pimp only because they are the main ones, uh, or the most popular ones, I should say. But there's all different kind of things you can find on the guide page, including the rules. And if you don't want to, you know, dig for the rules, you can always just click on the rules right here. And this goes into descriptions of what you can and can't do. Like you can only have one account, uh, different types of gameplay. You know, obviously, you can't use any type of software hacks or anything like that that automatically plays for you. So let's get into the main purpose of this video, and uh, that is the quick navigation of the main site, Utopia. And uh, just so you guys know, my child is awake, so if you hear any weird noises in the background, I'm sorry, she just woke up from her nap. I tried doing this before she woke up, but eh, things happen. Anyway, so this is the, this is the thing you're going to see every time you log in to your province, is the throne page. Uh, this is the main page. Uh, it gives you very basic information about your kingdom. Um, any recent news will be down here at the bottom. Uh, if your kingdom's at war, it'll be right here. Um, messages from the monarch and or the steward will be right here. Um, any type of game update information will be right here. Uh, then all of your information for your province will be right here. And uh, this is just basic information. I'm not going to go into it too much. Um, again, that's what all this, these resources up here are for. But uh, this gives you very basic information. And then you have these tabs up here that go into more detailed information. Uh, your state goes into more detailed information about the state of your province, uh, the peasant, peasants you have, the size of your army, all that fun junk. Uh, your military uh, goes into more detailed information about military. And before I go any further, I do want to explain something that's called Utopia Time, Utopia Days, and Ticking. Uh, they're all practically the same thing. Uh, any action you take in Utopia, any attacks you make, uh, any thievery spells you do, anytime you try to grow your buildings and whatnot, uh, those take time. Uh, they have the starting of it happens instantaneously. Same with attacks. Like when you attack someone, it happens instantaneously. But anything you gain from those attacks 
it takes time to get back to you. And the way it's done is by Utopia Days. One Utopia Day is one hour. So right now it's 5.37. If I were to stay on here for another 23 minutes, it would show, it would tick over, meaning I wouldn't be able to do anything until it's done ticking. That takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes. But uh, as soon as it's done ticking over, you can get back in the game and do whatever. But when it ticks, that means an hour has gone, or a day in Utopia has gone by. So like my army's out right now, and it's out for 7.97 days, meaning in 7.97 real life hours, I will have my army back. So that's that, and the same with down here, the little table down here. It shows you if you're training, you know, skeletons, zombies, ghouls, thieves, and obviously this is different for each race, but uh, it'll show you how many Utopia days they'll be ready, and uh, that's, again, real-life hours. So anytime you see things that say days left, it's not real-life days, it's Utopia days, which is real-life hours. Buildings, same thing. You know, how many you have, percent total, current effect, what the building is, if you're building any, how long until they'll be ready. And also, uh, they also go to a quick little explanation of what this stuff is. So, you know, if you don't want to continuously go back to this video or check the guide and forms and all that, you know, there's basic information right here for you. Science. Mystics, which I don't have. Mystics is a page that will show you any current spells on you, positive or negative, and how long uh, they have remaining. And then the history, and this pops up. don't know why. Blah, 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 blah. Go away. No one cares. Anyway, history pops up, uh, and it will show you, you know, your history, your highest, you know, times, defeated times, all, um, all of this stuff. It's mainly just for show. Uh, it doesn't really hold that much importance into the game. So that's your throne page and throne tabs. Next is the kingdom one. When you click on it, it'll show you your kingdom and all the players in your kingdom. You know, their race, their land, their net worth, and all that fun junk. And um, anything, sorry about the phone ringing, by the way, uh, but... uh. I'm going to pause the video right here because my kid wants me to put on a movie for her, so I will be right back. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, your kingdom. This is uh, the kingdom page. Again, it'll show you the race, land, net worth, and all that fun junk of everybody in your kingdom. Um, the light, the pink, pinkish red right here is your monarch. Uh, the yellowish orange right here is the Stuart, and then anyone that is in green and has a little triangle right there, uh, they're under protection. Uh, your province will be kind of bold, bigger than the others, and anyone that's online will have a little star next to it. And right now, there's only two people online from my kingdom, uh, but you can use this to randomize kingdom. Go into a different kingdom, blah, 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 blah. Or you can pick your own. Like right now, this is the kingdom that we're in war with. And uh, you mainly use this to, uh, you know, find targets and find very, very basic information on different provinces around the entire Utopia world. Um, so, again, this is just basic information. And I'll get more into that later when we get the stuff down here. But uh, also, espionage, you can check very, very, very basic information on any espionage done. And uh, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with Pimp and uh, Angel, you get better information. So uh, if you're using Utopia Angel and Utopia Pimp, this will be pretty much useless to you. Because uh, again, those those tools provide a heck of a lot more information than this. So that's the kingdom. Uh, moving on to news. News is important because it shows you the news of your province. Um, anything that has happened, like sometimes if you don't pay attention on the throne screen, it'll, it all gets archived right here. And you can go back and forward every day, which again is a real life hour. 
and show you what has happened. Um, like, they found troops dead, so-and-so causing trouble with our lands, blah, 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 blah. Um, right now I'm at war, that's why a lot of this stuff is happening to me. Uh, you can also check your kingdom news. This is uh, the legend for it. I'm not going to go into details because it's self-explanatory. But, uh, you know, this is something you want to check out every now and then, especially during war time to see who attacked who, who's been attacked, what aid has been sent, and all kinds of other information. Um, again, it's not something to live and die by, but it is something that you should check often. So uh, now we'll move on to these ones right here, and Explorer is the first one. And uh, you use Explorer mainly when you're actually in protection. Uh, after protection, you gain land by attacking more than anything. Uh, this is only an extreme measure after you're done uh, with protection. But uh, it shows you uh, the exploration cost of soldiers. So you need 18 soldiers per acre that you want to explore. And right now I have 738 available, but I'm not going to explore, so don't worry about it. The exploration cost and the gold needed. So you need 3,577 gold coins per acre that you want to explore. Um, available uncharted acres. Um, how many acres are uncharted in general? How many you're currently exploring and how many you can explore right now. So uh, again, mainly when you're in protection you want to use this. After protection, uh, this is not something you want to use very often. And again, you can find out reasons why and all that and all this stuff up here. So now we'll move on to growth, which is one of the most important things you'll use. Um, anytime you have available land, you want to build up on it. Now sometimes you want to leave land bare for certain reasons, again, depending on your strategy. And that's the reason why I'm not going to go into strategies too much, is because your strategy is going to be different from my strategy, which is going to be different from everyone else's strategy. So whenever I say something about strategy, I'm talking about your strategy. So right now I only have one undeveloped acre of land. Um, every building you build takes up an acre of land. Um, but it tells you how many you can build right now, how many is raisable right now, which uh, raises the raises tearing down buildings. And you want to tear down buildings if your strategy calls for it, pretty much. If you have too many of one thing and not enough of another, you can tear down buildings and then rebuild on that land. Uh, or if you're changing strategies, you know, you want to raise land and you, you'll you learn more about that once you research strategies up here. But all you do is you type in the number that you want to build. If you have, if you want to accelerate the construction, which doubles the cost, but also doubles the speed. Or if you have free building credits, which you get when you attack, like right now I have 68. You click on that little box right there and then you order the constructions. It's the same thing for raise. I'll show it to you real fast. Type in how many you want to destroy or destruction. Science, self-explanatory. Um, the research rate, how much you want to research and how fast you want to research. Um, all the information is right there. Uh, right now we're at war, so I want to save as much gold as possible because researching does take gold. And then the minimal income threshold, uh, pretty much you can set that to anything you want. And if you drop below a certain amount, you'll stop researching until you go above that amount. And then the books you have to allocate is right here. Um, and then however many is right here, you can put into any one of these, or you can spread it out if you want. Um, again, it's your strategy, so whatever you want to do. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details on this, but again, depending on the type of strategy you want, depends on where you want to put the sciences. I, wouldn't, I do not recommend trying to split it amongst all of them. Uh, it's just going to take way too much time, effort, and money to max all of these out and depending on your strategy you might not even be able to max out one of these anyway so again based on your strategy put them where you need to put them military is the next one and this is where you train all your troops or release troops uh, release self-explanatory I'm not going to get into that um, and again it's based on your strategy if you want to release troops or not but uh, training troops is right here your draft rate um, in order to draft soldiers you need to set this to something, uh, unless you're at none, unless you don't want to draft anybody for whatever reason, and you set it to none. But you set this to something, and it'll take peasants, and it'll train them into soldiers. Um, the draft target is how many peasants versus how many soldiers. Um, again, pretty self-explanatory, and the wage percent is also pretty self-explanatory. How much you pay them. 
Uh, again, all this right here, these three settings, is based off of your strategy. Uh, you don't have to do what I'm doing. Um, this changes all the time anyway. Uh, even if you're using my strategy, um, if you're using a different strategy, it's whatever. This will change constantly. So just bear that in mind and make sure you're changing it. Um, down here is where you actually train uh, the number of soldiers you have plus money because everything costs money. Unless you're certain races, certain races things cost less or things don't cost anything like growth if you're a dwarf. Building buildings don't cost anything. However, you can't accelerate the buildings. So bear that in mind. Um, but anyway, here's the max that you can train right now. This is how many you own, this is how many you're training, and this is the cost to train them. So self-explanatory, type in the number, hit train troops. Uh, you can accelerate it just like with buildings. You can accelerate the training, which is double the cost, but it's also double the speed. There's also free specialist credits, and you can see I have a whole bunch of those right now. Uh, those are only used for your offensive specialist or your defensive specialist, and that's always the first one and second one on this list, regardless of what race you are. So that takes care of that. And then we move on to wizards. And I have to pause again real fast, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, it is not easy having a two-year-old. Anyway, um, on to the wizards. Uh, this one is not that useful unless you're a mage. But uh, all, this, all this tab right here can do is you can release wizards. And you can train, or don't train anymore, or train more. Uh, right now I don't need any, so I'm not training any. Again, this is based on your strategy. So if you want to release them, if you want to keep them, hey, that's that's completely up to you and your strategy. But all you do is you type in the number, or you change these boxes, and then click Give Orders. So now on to the main ones that you're going to be using a lot, um, depending on your strategy and your style of play. If you're a mage, you're going to be using mystics a lot. If you're a thief, you're going to be using thievery. And if you're an attacker, you're going to be using the war room a lot. Um, there are strategies out there where you can be a mage slash attacker or thief slash mage and all that. So again, depends on your strategy. But uh, chances are, if you're a straight mage, you're not going to use thievery or war room too much. Um, that doesn't mean you won't use them, so I am going to go over all of them. Um, Mystics, there's two tabs up here. There's self spells and combat spells, so we'll go through the self spells first. Uh, self spells are exactly that, the spells you cast on yourself. I'm not going to go into details of what all of these do because each race does have different spells. Um, some of them are the same, but for the most part, a lot of them are different uh, across different races. So all you do is you just select on a spell you want to uh, set on yourself and then click cast spell. And you make sure you have enough runes, which runes are, the runes you needed are in parentheses. And the name of the spell is right here. Up here is the runes you have and mana. Uh, mana is a power level pretty much. Uh, once you drop below a certain percentage you can't cast any. The lower the mana is, the less chance you have of success. Plus uh, once you get to a certain point you can't cast any more anyway. So uh, there are single-use spells, which are spells that are used that you cast on yourself, but aren't used until you actually do something, like uh, Shadow Light, for instance. You know, it's ca or, uh, yeah, Shadow Light. You cast it, and I forget exactly what Shadow Light does because I I rarely ever play as a mage. But you can go to Guide right here, and it'll tell you what all of them do. So let's actually go and look at Shadow Light real quick. Shadow Light places a face upon a shadow, revealing the province associated with your next thievery operation against your lands. So anyone that attacks you uh, with thieves, you'll catch them. But that's when, as soon as you cast it, it stays active until that happens. So if it's not until three real life days from now, that spell will still be on. Unless it tells you otherwise. Same with this one. Uh, there's instant spells. There are spells that happen right then and there. But uh, my race doesn't have any. There's also fading spells. Spells that happen over time. Like minor protection. You cast that on yourself. And it stays there for X amount of Utopia days. Um, 
Combat spells are practically the same thing, only you have to choose a target. Now this is where the kingdom thing comes into play. Right now I'm at war with 329, so I can always just change to 329. And I can either use my kingdom page to find the suitable target, or I can use Utopia Angel with Utopia Pimp to find the suitable target. But anyway, what you do is you select the target that you want to attack, and let's just say we attack this guy. Then you select the spell that you want. And again, instant fading spells. Self-explanatory. Name of the spells and the number of runes that you need. Or runes you need. I don't know why I keep saying runes. But runes you need to uh, cast that spell. And as you can see, I don't have enough anyway, so I can't really do it. But you just pick whatever you want and then cast spell. So on to thievery. Now, thievery is going to show nothing because I don't have any thieves. But it's the exact same thing as mystics you you know select your target or and all that other fun junk select the number of thieves that you want to send select the operation and then go um, again you can find all this stuff in the guides the war room is where you go to attack now before I go into this one the actual war room tab I'm going to show you potential targets now potential targets is a somewhat decent tool to use when you're not at war with someone and the key phrase is not at war uh, because it'll show you different provinces from across the entire game you can select a race you can do amongst all races or any one of these races and let's just go dwarf and click search and what this will do is pick 20 random provinces that are close to you in network size land and or net worth per acre and uh, this is not a guarantee that you'll win any attacks on these people it's just finding you potential targets which is the reason why it's called potential targets now one thing that you do want to do is you want to make sure a kingdom is not at war like let's just say I want to attack this guy all you gotta do is click click on his kingdom numbers and see, he's not at war with anybody because it would say right here if they were. Plus, a lot of times they'll say the name of the kingdom, at war, stay out, all this other fun junk. But uh, the reason, there's many of reasons why you don't want to do it. Um, you don't want to attack a kingdom that's at war as long as... If, if they're at war with you, then obviously you go for it. But if they're at war with someone else, you just want to stay out because it's, it's mainly common courtesy. But there's a lot of other reasons why you don't want to do it. And I'm not going to go into details with, with that, but it's all up here. So that's the potential targets tab. Um, you can also define targets with Utopia Pimp. Uh, the, I'm not going to go into details of how to do that, but it's a little bit better than potential targets. Uh, anyway, here's the war room. If you're an attacker, uh, anytime you're going to attack, this is the one you want to use. Um, here's where you put in your target kingdom. Uh, since I've already put in that, up here in Kingdom, it's going to stay like that no matter where I go. So, uh, if I wanted to change it, all I have to do is change these numbers and then click Go. So, here's where you would choose the target. Now, I've already attacked this guy. Um, here it'll show you the target name and their size relative to you in parentheses. Um, like I said, this guy was at like 109% bigger than me. I just recently attacked him, he's down to 105% now. But uh, let's say I want to attack him again. Make sure it's highlighted. Click on it. The different type of attack. Now I'm not going to go into details with these, but um, it depends on what you want to do. Um, traditional march is mainly for gaining land, but there's all different kind of things. And again, it's it's depending on your strategy plus your war strategy, uh, it's something that you want to talk to your kingdom about, you know, your monarch, you know, that anytime you're at war, they'll give war strategies, so you want to make sure you talk to them, but, uh, there's all these different ones that you can choose from, then there's also modify attack time, now this is a neat little thing, um, like right now, my mod my time is not modified, zero hours. So if I were to attack, my army would be gone for 11.4 days, which is 11.4 real life hours, and I would get only 100% gains. But I can change that to negative two. My army's not out as long, but I don't gain as much. And I can extend that to four hours. My army's out longer, but I gain a lot more. So that's something to bear in mind as well. 
uh, generals to send, you have to send at least one general for every single attack that you do. Um, up here it'll tell you how many deployable generals you have. Uh, you can send more than one. It does add to your offensive points if you send more than one general. However, you need at least one. And then down here is where you choose how many you want to send. It shows you what's available. The unit name, what's available, and how many to send. Um, once you p punch in these numbers right here, you click on prepare military, and you're going to get either a green little background or a red little background, and I'll show you what I'm talking later um, when I get to forms. But uh, if you see a green background with some text in it, it means you succeeded, and it'll tell you what happened and what you gained and uh, what you lost. Um, if it's red, it means you failed. And if you failed, it'll tell you, it won't tell you why you failed. Obviously, it won't tell you, oh, well, your army wasn't big enough or anything, but, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory why you failed. Your army wasn't big enough, um, or their army was stronger, whatever. But uh, it'll tell you what you've lost whenever you fail. And uh, same with thievery and mystics. Um, you can succeed and fail on those. Uh, if you succeed, again, it'll tell you what happened. If you fail, again, it'll tell you what happened. So that's that in a nutshell. Um, aid is this is where you want to send anything to anybody. Like, see, I have food, and I'm undead. I don't need food, so I can send this to somebody. So next time I come on and play real life, uh, I can send that to somebody. But here's your current trade balance, and you see I'm negative because uh, when I f I came into this kingdom halfway through the age, and I was kind of small and everyone else is big so they sent me stuff to help get up there and uh... if i wanna try to even that out i gotta start sending stuff to other people all you do is you click here and choose a target in your kingdom and then send and then apply orders um, you can also block incoming aid uh... sometimes people in your kingdom if they get too big of a trade balance they'll randomly send something to somebody just to try to get that trade balance even and uh, if you don't want your trade balance to go down or if you already have a whole bunch of stuff and you don't want and or need anymore you can block incoming aid and uh, if you just want to do that you click on that block and click apply orders but uh, that's aid in a nutshell and here's dragons uh, under dragons you can fund the dragon um, mainly used during war times uh, dragons have different effects on the entire kingdom depending on the type of dragon you're going to send and again that's that's a little bit too much right now so we'll just stick with the basics if you want to fund the dragon uh, right here tells you how much you need to get the dragon going and how much you have to send so your entire kingdom has to send my entire kingdom has to send over three million gold in order to get this dragon going and right now I, that's all I have so I kind of need that to build up my stuff, so I'm not going to send anything, and I did earlier anyway, so. Uh, if there's a dragon attacking your lands, uh, there would be another tab up here you click on to attack dragon, and uh, you can send any military units that you have at the dragon. Um, it'll explain it right here, you know, what each military unit will take off the dragon. However, any military units you send to attack the dragon, die they won't come back like a normal attack will. They're just gone. So if you have 5,000 soldiers and you send all 5,000 soldiers at the, at the dragon, you just lost 5,000 soldiers. But at the same time, you took some health off the dragon, so that's a plus. So it's a double-edged sword on that one. Just make sure you don't undercut yourself, but at the same time, you want to get rid of that dragon because that dragon is going to cause all kinds of havoc in your kingdom. So now we're going to move on to things that are more social. Um, here's your mail, and it works just like normal email. You know, here's your inbox, you can pose mail, sent any mail that you've sent, and any mail that's in your trash. I'm not going to go into details because I'm pretty sure you all know how to use email. Uh, just so you do know, though, this mail, when you compose mail, you can send it to anybody in the game. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone in your kingdom. It could be anybody in the game, game as long as you know their kingdom numbers. So, send it to whoever and again it's just it's used to communicate with an individual instead of an entire kingdom so uh, just bear that in mind again not going to go into too many details you all know how to use email pretty simple um, form 
Now here is the game form. This is the one that's used for your game, your kingdom. Uh, it's different than this form. This is the community form. This is the game form, the kingdom form. All right. This is the form that you use to talk to people in your kingdom. Uh, anything you, anything can be brought up here. Uh, the monarch and steward are in charge of the form. They can delete any topics that they want. They can close any topics. They can make any topic sticky. Uh, so they're going to set it up however is in here. You can also create your own topics, but again, uh, most of the topics will be created for you. Uh, like uh, right now, since we're at war, we have all kind of 329 stuff here going on. Uh, dragons, blah, 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 blah. Uh, war orders, so forth. Um, you also have, you know, general talk ones, your pimp codes for Utopia Pimp. But uh, again, this is where you communicate with your kingdom as a group. If you want to communicate individually, you use mail. If you want to communicate as a group, you use the form. And then the war form is the same thing, only you communicate with the other kingdom that you're at war with. You know, if you want to negotiate a ceasefire, a peace, um, so forth, whatnot, uh, this is where you'd go to do it. Um, mainly your monarch and your steward are in charge of that, but this is where you go to throw your two cents in, maybe taunt them a little bit, and whatever the case may be, but this is where you go to do that. Politics. There's a lot up here for politics, but this is the first one in politics is vote. And ignore the phone in the background, I'm sorry about that. But uh, here's where you would vote on, you know, what province you want to be monarch. Um, all you do is you come down here, choose the province, and hit vote. And I'm going to pause this right now. Alright, again, sorry about that. But, uh, oops, I changed my vote. Huh, so i got to change that back. But, uh, oh no, it's still the same. Alright, cool. Anyway, you just change your vote to whoever. And then just click on vote. Uh, and that takes care of, uh, takes care of the monarch. Um, war, uh, this shows you who you're at war with and some information. Uh, cease fires, uh, this is kingdoms that are, you have cease fires with. Um, Anything, I don't know if you can even attack kingdoms that you uh, have ceasefire with. I've never tried. So, but uh, this is a good thing to check just in case you can. And then relations, this is where you check to see if there's, uh, if you're unfriendly with someone or hostile with someone but not at war with them. And then rankings, this is again just like bragging rights pretty much. Uh, it's not important to the game itself, but uh, if you want to check your land overall, you know, these are the top provinces in the world overall, by race, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to go into details. It's right there. Uh, preferences. This is where you can change things uh, if you want to change details about your province. Um, I can't because I just recently attacked. Uh, you can't have any aggression within 24 hours in order to change that. Plus, it's also a premium feature, which is something that you pay for. Uh, vacation mode is something that you would do if you're actually going on vacation. It puts you, it puts your kingdom in protection. Um, this is something that I would talk to your kingdom about, or at least your monarch, before you go and do it. Um, mainly because if you're on vacation too long, they can get rid of you. Uh, province sitting, uh, again, a premium feature, but it's the same as vacation mode, but instead of being in protection, you let someone in your kingdom actually run your province. There's also abandoned province. If you just are tired of the province you're in and you don't want to move, just abandon. You have to wait 24 hours after you abandon to create a new province, but 24 real life hours. But nonetheless, you can do that. And then there's also random move. If you don't like the kingdom that you're in, but you don't want to have to start all over again, you can do a random move, which will randomly move you to a different kingdom. You do lose some of your things when you do that, but nonetheless, that's how you do it. Um, then there's taunts. I've never used taunts before, but it's pretty much a thing to taunt other players, other kingdoms. But that's a premium feature, I believe, and it's nothing that anyone ever really uses anyway that, I, that I'm aware of. But that's that. Um, over here, you see this little thing keeps popping up. Um, this is so you can talk to your kingdom, uh, so you don't necessarily have to always use the form. 
but you can talk to anyone who's on like right now it says there's four users on you can click on that it'll show you who's on and type your messages in there and it's almost like an instant messenger and the last thing to show you is this up here you'll see a little guy with your name uh, you can change any account settings public profile you know, remove advertising that's where the premium feature comes in uh, you can change your email address and you can log out and that's what I'm going to do right now and it brings you back to this main page so that's it for the video today hopefully um, the interruptions weren't too much for my child and I apologize for that but uh, hopefully you've learned something about the game uh, whether you're a new player whether you're experienced hopefully it gets you into the game more and it also gives you some of the resources you can use to help better yourself in the game uh, stick around uh, make sure you subscribe I will be posting more videos about the game as well as other videos that involve other things and I'll get into that later on my page but uh, make sure you subscribe hope you guys learn something uh, just make sure you have fun with the game alright guys see you later